Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on January 14th, 2022. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet, and welcome to the Daily Do. I'm going to give you a live update today as I'm having some troubles with my video app, but we're going to work that out over the next few days. We're going to start out here always looking at our sun as it's been a pretty active today. Large CME has occurred on the bottom right hand side of our sun. Watch right there. That is a large CME. Lots of plasma associated with it. And it looks like it may give us a glancing blow in the future here. So having a look around, still observing the solar tornado over here along the equator. And as well, active fiery sunspot incoming. That is the one that has ejected about three or four flares over the past few days on the back side of the sun. So we also have this earth facing coronal hole right here. Look under a different light. We'll be able to see it. Pretty intense coronal hole earth facing right now and has been facing us this whole time as it is crested in and it doesn't look like it's diminishing another quick look at that CME bottom right hand side here and as well as solar flares top left now having a look at ISWA which is the space prediction spiral here's the CME and it looks like the tail may just graze Venus and as well Earth, which is this yellow dot right here. You can see Mercury coming in here to play for a retrograde right now. Mercury retrograde, folks. Watch for these earthquakes to increase over the next few days. Quick look at space weather. As you can see, solar X-ray flux is showing an M-class flare earlier today, and then followed by B and C class flares. So geomagnetic activity has definitely up into the KP6 level now. I just noticed, I noticed it was just hovering under five, but now we are at a KP6. So we are currently under a G2 moderate geostorm thanks to the coronal hole and as well the CME solar flare, M-class solar flare. Having a quick look here at the Aurora forecast for tonight. Looks like it'll be stretching down into Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Northern Ontario. Watch for it to really light up over Russia and Europe. Oh yeah. We got hit big time. That is a large geostorm, folks. And it looks like it's going to affect uh, most of Norway, Sweden, Finland. Going to be some beautiful northern lights up there. That's for sure. Have a quick look at our real time solar wind. As it must be up over 600 kilometers per second now. Oh, no. Just over five, or just under 500 kilometers per second, 474 kilometers per second. But this uh, density bunches. They're really starting to pack, pile up. A little flip flop with the phi angle. Wow, the polarities here. Something's up there. We'll have a quick look at the geo storm. Under the D wrap here shows the 
enhanced frequency, highest frequency affected absorption. Looks like South America was hit and as well middle of the South Pacific. That's been going on all day. Let's have a quick look at the Schumann resonance for today. He's alive. He's alive. Our planet is very much alive. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to daily events worldwide, keeping humanity aware and prepared. Natural disasters, weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, and as well, our almighty and powerful sun. I want to welcome everybody who is in the live chat right now. Thanks for tuning in to the streams. I really appreciate the love and support to the channel. And as well, all of the new faces. Welcome to the family. Looking at a Schumann resonance today of power of 11. A nice, low power. Looks like it's just starting to jump up in the last few frames there. An amplitude of 11, quality of 12. So that is a good hum for our planet and as well the species of humanity. Now let's have a quick look at the last 24 hours for earthquakes as we are still experiencing a pretty high volume of earthquakes. Just under 300 earthquakes reported by USGS around the world. We had a rare earthquake here in Tunisia, Africa. Continuing earthquake here in Greece. Let's get the magnitude on here. 4.3. And as well up into Afghanistan, a 5.2 and a 4.3 today. 4.2 into the Indian plate. And then we started off the day with a large 6.7 uh, west, northern Indonesia. Right south of Krakatoa. Sizable 5.2, 4.5, 4.7 throughout Indonesia. Activity coming back to Japan here, 4.2, Taiwan, 4.9 here, Bonin Islands region, and as well a 4.2, Kursk, Russia. Activity continues through Alaska as well. Largest reported earthquake today, 4.7. And then we get to North American Plate. And wow, we had an earthquake. Vancouver Island, 4.2, 4.3, uh, Port McNeil, and as well, Port Hardy reporting a 4.1. Looking across the United States, there's not much to talk about. That swarm has since stopped in Anza, California. No other swarms to talk about and no peculiar activity through uh, the United States. Highest reported earthquake in Hawaii, 2.9. I forgot about Fiji here. Just recently, we did have a pretty deep earthquake, 4.4 and as well a 5.0. The 4.4 looks to be about 500 kilometer depth. We'll just have a quick look here on USGS. Yeah, and they're reporting 585 kilometer depth, 4.4. Quick look across the United States. The most recent earthquakes. Kansas, Azaria, 2.7 reported. As well, minor activity coming back to Oklahoma. I haven't seen some there for a while. And a lot of people were claiming that all those earthquakes last year were fracking in Oklahoma. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, because they're still fracking, aren't they? As well across the Pacific Northwest, activity calming down around Yellowstone. Minor activity coming back to Stanley, Idaho, and it's been a while since we've seen the activity there. And then we get to Rainier. Where today, Ashford, Washington, 0 0.2. Yeah, minor activity at that around Rainier. South America, 
Only two earthquakes there, there to report the last 24 hours, Calama, Chile, and as well, Antofagasta, Chile. Quick look at Volcano Discovery as they are reporting over the last 24 hours, 255 earthquakes between 2.0 and 3.0, as well 31 earthquakes between 4.0 and 5.0, largest being the 6.6 .6 Indian Ocean, southwest Jakarta, Indonesia, early this morning. Well, Eastern, early this morning for us. Another quick look at weather here as we do have quite a winter storm that is developing as forecasted yesterday in the Daily Dew. Unfortunately, no forecast video for tonight, but definitely giving you an update around the world for earthquakes, space weather, and as well, let's have a quick look at volcanoes. Because Hunga Tonga has erupted quite an ash cloud yet again, and that was reported two days ago. But looking at windy models, actually that's what I'm going to show you, is the windy models showing the SO2 that is forecast for the next few days. Especially all of the... Yeah, especially all of the activity that came from Hunga Tonga. Air quality, let's get to SO2. Here we are, get the big map going. And yeah, you've seen these maps before and this is a very big cloud which has been traveling west through the South Pacific coming from the Galapagos Islands. And as well, very large cloud here coming from Hunga Tonga. So watch, put this into motion Friday and Saturday, Sunday, and right up into Tuesday, you can see that big cloud moving west. SO2 for the United States. Got to wonder where all this is coming from. Utah, Colorado, Albuquerque. Hmm. Mm hmm. But, anyways, wanted to share that with you as a pretty large eruption at Hunga Tonga has ejected a very large ash and SO2 cloud into our atmosphere. And as well, a pretty large eruption here for Wego, or that might actually be from the last eruption from uh, Wolf Volcano. That's right, the wolf volcano's over here. Hunga Tonga is over here. But yeah, friends and family from around the world, stay aware and prepared. And I appreciate you tuning in every day to these daily reports, keeping humanity aware and prepared to all the planetary events, earthquakes, volcanoes, space weather. Thanks for watching today. This has been Mike with Dylan.